Okay, class, uh, welcome to chapter three, ethics and responsibility. So these topics that we're gonna discuss really cover not only ethics and social responsibility in terms of business, but also as a professional, when you graduate from SFA, how do you conduct yourself? And you will see in your business classes, and you probably already have, that there are tons of case studies that are done and scenarios that are discussed in your class that you can talk through and think through. It's not always right and wrong and black and white. And so that is, it's a hard thing to teach. Um, that is why we tell you all to do case studies because every scenario is different, especially as you get into your management classes, um, you'll start to think about different scenarios and how these all ethics and responsibility kind of work hand in hand. So um, my personal opinion is that you you kind of already know who you are before you come to college. You've, you're here, you're in this class, you're listening to this lecture, like you understand the importance of doing the right thing, conducting yourself professionally, engaging in your work and in your coursework. Um, if you work full time or you work night shifts or you work um, a job to pay for school, like you have some, you know, get up and go that some people don't. And so I think that in itself is important, but um, lots of ethical decisions are made in situations in the real world under time, pressure, and sometimes under st and in stressful situations. I can speak to this when we were dealing with COVID-19 and I was over communications at the city. There were lots and lots of things that elected officials were trying to decide upon quickly under a stressful unknown situation. And we really had to lean back on our morals and our values. And so here are some key terms you can kind of look through, but um, really I want you to start to think about, I'm scrolling because I had, thought I had uh, a slide in here that I wanted to tell you about, but I'll just tell you anyway, without the slide. Um, we really want you to think about the difference between morals and values and what that means to you. Um, some people define these things differently. Your book will give you a, you know, pretty perfect definition of morals and values, but think about how that applies to you. Part of why you did the SWOT analysis this week, or if you haven't done it already, um, that's why it's given at the beginning of this class. So you can kind of start to think about who you are as a person, because as you go into business, you'll have to certainly be engaged in situations that are ethical or unethical, hopefully not, or you'll have to make decisions to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So um, what makes up a civil society? We, we have that. Um, we have these norms that we all accept as a society. We know that you can't walk up and punch somebody in the throat. We know that yelling at somebody on the street is wrong. We know that murder is wrong. We could probably all agree on this like core set of rules, right? the way that we maintain our behaviors, how we regulate to not have a lot of conflict, how we deal with conflict in a civil way. Um, but really all of this is one big ball of fun when it comes to how we determine what these things look like. So things that are really easy, don't murder someone. Okay, that's black and white. We all know the answer to that question. But when we get into situations that are more difficult and let's say stickier, we look at laws, we look at ethics, we look at groups that, you know, have led the industry in different situations. We look at people and their still what we call self-regulation. How do they decide on their own what's right and what's wrong? We look at the media and then we look at an active civil society. So what are ethics? Remember I said, think about the difference between ethics and values. Well, ethics are the principles or the values that govern the conduct of a group. Laws, on the other hand, are things, when we say the word codified here, um, that's kind of a funny term, but codified means it's in a code somewhere. So for example, our laws in Nacogdoches are the code of ordinances. So we codify things that are, that are law, that are laws. So codes and laws kind of are an interchangeable term. Um, so laws take ethics and they say, okay, these are the ethics, these are the rules, these are the guidelines, and we're going to make them a law. These are created by governments and controlled and enforced by governments. <clears throat> but um, when we talk about 
in these informal groups. Remember I said there were all these different things right here that kind of go together. So we've, we know ethics now, we know laws. So now we're gonna look at formal and informal groups. These are businesses, organizations, and clubs that all have a code of conduct. So SFA has its own code of conduct in which how it wants its students to represent themselves when they are in class and out of class. A lot of this is um, done by self-regulation as well. So, <clears throat> hey, um, I'm going to say that if I have um, a university, let's say we were at a religious associated university and they said no students can drink alcohol, which is a thing. Um, a lot of universities are like that if they are affiliated with a church. So they self-regulate themselves and they say, hey, if you're going to go to school here, you're not going to partake in the drinking of adult beverages. So that is a voluntary acceptance of standards that are established by the entity, the university, that are um, that are available to, to you. So um, then we look at the media. We all know how the media works, so I won't spend a lot of time on that, but they certainly keep um, the media is there to be a force that holds people accountable when they are not. And so in an open society, the media obviously plays a really important role. And then an informed society that utilizes all these things, one through five, uh, this society that's formed from that, that you're a part of, can really help mold individual and corporate behavior. So what is ethical behavior? Um, this is the standard of behavior why, of how conduct is judged. So are you doing the right thing or are you doing the wrong thing? Each person, like remember I said, think about the difference between morals and values. Each person may have a different set of values, but they may have the same morals as somebody else. Your morals are built on your values. So these are unwritten rules that people have developed from their interactions. Um, yours may look different than mine. Mine may look different than yours. That's okay. Um, as long as we're not violating a law or being unethical, most of the time humans in our free society will have varying morals and ethics. That's, that's just the way, the way that our country is made. So um, there are all of these theories. I'm gonna let you ro roll through those as we go through the course. Um, they're in your textbook, but they kind of think, they help you think through the way that different ethics can be applied in real life. So this will help you decide and kind of help you look at it. And I want you to, as you read about these different theories to kind of say, okay, um, are my moral values and the things that I'm doing different than my parents or my family members? And what do you do that drives your moral behavior. Um, think about those things and then read about these and see where you think you fall or what your kind of your philosophy may be. Um, but well, let's talk about business, right? So when we, there's a reason why this is the beginning of the class. We've got things, lots of businesses that we have what we call social responsibility. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, businesses have a certain ethical responsibility to the people that they're serving, to their customers, to the communities that were in which they operate. And so every action taken by a business may vary. That will depend on one of these theories. Some businesses may have different ethical theories than others, but they look also to their morals to develop cultural values and norms and different things that are associated with who they are as a business in itself. So we're talking beyond who am I as a person, but we're talking about who is my business? What does my business stand for? So these can be specific, they can be time oriented. Um, they uh, um, stress the importance of rules. So it helps you with those, remember we talked about internal controls, like how we, how we regulate what happens within a company and that was in the context of your SWOT analysis, but it, it, it's the same thing here. Internally, you kind of have to have a code of ethics or something that um, drives internal behaviors of your business. Um, a code of ethics, you may have heard of them. We, um, I had a boss, he was the city manager of the city of Nacogdoches for many, many years. He had been a city manager for 42 years, which is a very long time. Um, and he had his own personal code of ethics. So he would run into situations like um, a business owner 
that wants to do a new development, maybe wants to build a shopping center in a community that he worked in, would say, hey, come, you know, eat at the fancy restaurant in town and I'll buy your dinner. And oh, by the way, we'll talk about business while we're there. Well, that is an attempt to be unethical. If I'm your friend and I give you favors, then maybe you'll let the city um, help me with incentives or maybe the city will not make me follow all the rules because you're my friend. That's me being giving you a silly example, but he had to have a very strong code of ethics because it helped him say at any given point when the situation got complicated, it helped him go, okay, let me go back to the base point. Let me go back to my code of ethics and see what am I supposed to do? Like I said, this helps control that internal behavior. It helps avoid confusion. So if, oh my gosh, well now I have somebody who really is my friend that I hang out with all the time and they want me to do them a favor or they want me to rush the process and get, you know, th make things happen faster than for me than they would for other people. Even little silly things like that are a violate, we're a violation of his code of ethics. He treated everybody the same all the time, but we're all humans. And so it's very natural to think, well, I could very easily let something slide or not even think twice about it. Um, I'll give you all a personal example. So for me, when I was at the city, I had um, a gentleman who truly was not trying to be shady. He wasn't trying to be unethical. He just was thinking about his business and his operations. And he was going to put Christmas lights up in downtown Nacogdoches. And so I was meeting with him to talk about kind of how we wanted it to look and what it was going to be like and all this stuff. And I was brand new to town. We had just purchased a house here. And I said, hey, you, he had mentioned he was going to be out by my in my neighborhood that same day. Like, oh, yeah, I know where you live. I'll be out there later. And I said, hey, when you drive by, look at my house and tell, let me know also how much it would cost me to just put lights up on my house as well. And he said, well, I'll give you a really good deal on it if you'll give me this bid from the city. And I said, well, that will get me in a lot of trouble. And he was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And we kind of had a little giggle about it. But he, in his mind, was like, well, I could get two birds with one stone. You give me this, you give me the bid at the city, and I'll help you out. Like, you're helping me out, I'll help you out. He truly was not being malicious in his, in his suggestion. But really what he was saying and not realizing was, oh, um, I have tax dollar money that I am in control over, and I can use that to personally benefit myself. So I'll give you this big contract with the city if you'll come out to my house and personally help me. And I was like, that, that can't happen. Like that would get me fired, dude. And he was like, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I apologize. And so that really facilitated a discussion as it says here amongst uh, my coworkers, because I thought, wow, this must happen to people all the time because it's so, it starts out so innocent. And so I had to be very quick to say, oh, can't do that. Sorry. That looks, that's like not real good on my part. And he was like, okay. So that's just another example. And that's like something as basic as Christmas lights. And that's why I tell this story because I feel like it illustrates how that didn't have anything to do with um, exchanging money or a bribe or um, some crime that was being committed. It was just something that was in poor taste. And so it can happen very, very easily. And that's why a code of ethics is important to have, even if it's not formal. In my mind, I knew that was wrong and I jumped right on it and said it was wrong but you have to have something to kind of help you have a foundation. So let's talk about corporate responsibility, corporate social responsibility, CSR. This is when a business looks out for the benefit of the community they live in or that they operate in. So um, for example, Walmart, they come into a community, they buy a big piece of land, they develop that land, they pour lots of concrete, it causes lots of heat and, you know, they may destroy a green space. They um, have, you know, lots of traffic because people need to shop at Walmart. All these different things happen when a development like that comes into a community. Well, they have a corporate responsibility to now give back to the community. So that happens with different businesses in different ways. You probably have seen it and don't even realize it it's because um, you are you are uh, taking part. So you might've seen like an Amazon commercial where it says, we're gonna be you know, more green friendly by year 2025. 
Well, they're saying, look, we get it. We're delivering Amazon packages all over the country. We're using lots of emissions and we're driving vehicles all over. And we've really increased the amount of um, pollution in their mind. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just telling you what they say. And so we're going to make an effort because we're socially responsible. We realize we've done that and we're profiting from it. So now we're going to make sure that we give back in a different way. So with that, um, I will let you all kind of read through this about social responsibility and look at that. Um, I want you to know about stakeholders. I want you to understand what stakeholders, how they have to do with ethical theory and how it all kind of plays together. You've seen a little bit of that in your mind tap quiz as well. So um, I'm not going to read all of these to you, but hopefully that little introduction will give you a first glance and a better understanding of why we care about uh, social responsibility and ethics. So thanks for tuning in guys. Bye.